Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the acute inflammatory response and anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so we're currently discussing uh, the uh, NZ drugs, okay, and we are discussing cyclooxygenase 2 selective drugs and why they haven't had much luck, basically. So, there was this drug known as rofecoxib, also known by its brand name as Viox, and this had to be withdrawn off the market because it caused heart attack in people um, who uh, took it. Okay, and the reason for that is that cyclooxygenase 2 isn't just expressed in type 2 activated endothelial cells. In actual fact, it is expressed to a little bit, uh, to a little extent, in all endothelial cells. And it's actually really important in the production of a little bit of prostacyclin in all endothelial cells all over the body. Okay, uh, so what happened is when you inhibited cyclooxygenase 2, um, in the endothelial cells uh, by giving a selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor, then it stopped the production of prostacyclin uh, by these endothelial cells. Uh, and they all produce, always produce a tiny little bit. And this meant that uh, blood vessels stopped having this permanent signal to um, relax, basically, because prostacyclin, remember, is this signal telling blood vessels to relax. It tells vascular smooth muscle cells to relax and therefore causes vasodilatation. And basically what you get is if you inhibit cyclooxygenase 2 selectively, you get vasoconstriction of the coronary arteries, and that cuts off blood supply uh, to the heart and causes myocardial infarction. Now, you might ask, well, why don't the um, non-selective cyclooxygenase inhibitors um, cause that as well? Because they surely inhibit this cyclooxygenase 2 that's constitutively expressed in all endothelial cells. And therefore, uh, they uh, should cause the exact same thing. Well, the reason they don't cause heart attack is because they also inhibit cyclooxygenase 1. Now, let me explain this. Basically, within your blood, you have a bunch of little cell fragments known as platelets floating around. Okay, so platelets are produced by megakaryocytes in the bone marrow, and a megakaryocyte is a massive great cell. And what happens is this megakaryocyte sort of pinches off a little bit of its cytoplasm with a little bit of membrane and chucks this little cell fragment off, and this is what becomes a platelet, okay? So this is a megakaryocyte within the bloodstream. Sorry, not within the bloodstream, within the bone marrow. Megakaryocyte. Okay, and they produce platelets, which are also known as thrombocytes, which are these little cell fragments which are uh, in the blood. Okay, now thrombocytes or platelets have no nucleus, but they do have... Uh, cyclooxygenase 1 enzymes within their membranes. So here they have a cyclooxygenase 1 enzyme. And this continually converts arachidonic acid firstly into prostaglandin G2 and then into prostaglandin H2. So here is prostaglandin G2 and then it will convert it on into prostaglandin H2. Now also in the plate that you have an enzyme known as thromboxane A2 synthase. Okay, and this is going to convert prostaglandin um, H2 into thromboxane A2. Okay, so this is thromboxane A2 synthase. And this produces something known as thromboxane A2, which is often abbreviated to TXA2. So T is for the thrombo. The X is for zane over there, from boxane, and then A2 is for A2, okay? And this from boxane A2 is continuously being released by platelets. So all the platelets that are circulating around your bloodstream right now are creating uh, from boxane A2, okay? And from boxane A2 goes to the smooth muscle cells the vascular smooth muscle cells that surround blood vessels and causes vasoconstriction. Okay, 
So, why don't all our blood vessels start vasoconstricting? Well, basically, it's because they're also receiving this signal from prostacyclin, okay, PGI2, which is being produced by the endothelial cells. So let me now draw an endothelial cell here. So endothelial cells constitutively have two cyclooxygenase enzymes expressed. They have COX-1, and they also have this fantastic, much better version, COX-2, expressed to a small extent. So they have much more COX-1 than they have COX-2, uh, but they do have some COX-2 expressed. Okay, so I'll colour these in. So here is COX-1 in red, okay, and here is the COX-2 in orange, okay. Now, what's going to happen is both of these enzymes are continuously converting arachidonic acid into prostaglandin G2 and then into prostaglandin H2. Only here, the prostaglandin H2 is then being converted to prostacyclin, and that is then causing vasodilatation of the blood vessels. So this is inhibiting vasoconstriction, okay? So it's causing relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle cells and is therefore keeping the blood vessels open. So there is this continual balance between the plate that's producing a molecule which tells the blood vessels to constrict and the endothelial cells producing a molecule which tells uh, the um, blood vessels to um, stay open, basically. Okay, now when you activate type 1 and type 2 activation within this endothelial cell, then that's going to cause the endothelial cell to completely upregulate the amount of prostacyclin it produces. And then the prostacyclin wins basically against the thromboxane A2. It just dominates and causes vasodilatation. But usually there's a balance between them and the blood vessels just sort of stays in a midway between being constricted and being dilatated, so it's in the middle. Okay, so let me explain that. So normally, it's let's say in that sort of a state, this is the constricted state and it can go into the dilatated state in the inflammatory response. So prostacycline going up is going to drive it in this direction and from boxane A2 going up will derive it in this direction. Now, usually, if you give a non-selective cyclooxygenase inhibitor, such as aspirin or um, ibuprofen, it knocks out both of these enzymes. So it's going to knock out COX-1 here and here, and it's also going to knock out COX-2. So you stop the production of both thromboxane A2 and prostacycline. However, think about this. The plate that cannot produce any more cyclooxygenase enzymes because it has no nucleus, so it has no DNA, so it can't synthesize any more enzymes. Whereas the endothelial cell can produce as many as it likes, basically. So if you inhibit a few, it can just make more. So it can restore its function, or it, it can restore its production of prostacyclin, whereas the plate that can't restore its, function, its production of thromboxane A2. So overall, Cox non-selective COX inhibitors are not going to cause vasoconstriction because they stop the thromboxane A2 as well as stopping temporarily the production of prostacyclin. If anything, they're going to have the opposite effect. They're going to stop the production of thromboxane A2 and only temporarily stop the production of prostacyclin and therefore the prostacyclin will start winning and you're going to get vasodilatation which is going to be protective against heart attack. And this is the basis for giving aspirin out as a cardiovascular protective agent, that it holds uh, open the blood vessels and um, therefore helps if you are at risk of having a heart attack. Okay, um, right, so um, the problem with COX-2 selective inhibitors such as celecoxib and rofecoxib is that they just kick off this one, they, they kick out this one, they stop this one from working, and therefore 
cyclooxygenase 1s continue working. So the platelets produce the same amount of thromboxane A2 as ever. Now the endothelial cells produce much less prostacycline, and therefore thromboxane A2 is going to win, and it's going to cause vasoconstriction. And if that happens in the heart, and you are already at risk, uh, then uh, you're at risk of having a heart attack. And that's why um, rofecoxib was taken off the market. So you might ask, well, how can senecoxib still be used? Well, the reason is that senecoxib is nowhere near as COX-2 selective as rofecoxib was. Rofecoxib was very, very selective for cyclooxygenase 2. It inhibited cyclooxygenase 2 and had very little effect on cyclooxygenase 1. Whereas senecoxib, we call it a COX-2 selective inhibitor, and that really, that just means that uh, it prefers COX-2 to COX-1, but it will inhibit COX-1 as well. So it is a mixed COX-1 inhibitor, but it favours COX-2. It's more selective for COX-2, certainly, than aspirin or ibuprofen, but it's not as selective for COX-2 as uh, rofecoxib was. Uh, and being too COX-2 selective is what makes you dangerous as a uh, NZ. Okay, so these um, three drugs... Uh, Senecoxib, aspirin, and ibuprofen, they do reduce the production of prostacycline by these endothelial cells in the uh, affected area, and therefore they do stop the vasodilatation of the blood vessels to that area, and therefore stop the build-up of an inflammatory exudate exudate as badly, they stop redness, they stop uh, the heat at that affected area. Okay, so they will have a good anti-inflammatory effect, basically. In the next video, what we'll turn our attention to is the glucocorticoids, which are also immunosuppressants, but they do have very powerful anti-inflammatory effects.